Hi everyone, in this video what we're going to do is a demonstration of the state machine module. This module can help us to create dynamic flows for the state of an object. So let's go to Visual Studio. Here I have a SAF application, which is basically a normal SAF application, it's Windows and Web. And if we check the module designer, you will see that I have implemented the state machine module. So, so far so good. Also, in this same project, I have created the invoice um, persistent object. This object only contains three properties, date, amount, and status. And the status in this case is an enum. And here we have the enum. So these are all the possible states for an invoice. The main problem with this is that these states are not linear. From one you can jump to the to another one that is like three steps ahead and then go back. So that you usually have to do it in code, but with the state machine module you can create it create the state dynamically and the transitions dynamically um, inside of the application. So let's see how that works. First, let's create an invoice. So if we create an invoice, we can see that we are free to select any of the states that we want. And it's not necessarily the next state after um, the one that we are already in. So let's uh, fix this with the state machine module. So let's create a state machine. And this will be uh, invoice flow. The target object type will be invoice and the target the state property name will be status. Here you will see all the properties that are either objects or enum. So in this case we have an enum property which is the status so that's what we're selecting here. So now that we have at least the header of the state machine let's create the possible states we will create one state for each of the num um, entries that we have. So let's start. I will do it one by one in order. Uh, it's not necessary how they should happen, but uh, just to make sure that we create all the possible states. So draft none. overdue, paid, sent, void, and write off. Okay, so first is that the caption does not have to necessarily be the same value of the marker. You can change it, but once you select the marker, it populates automatically the caption, but you can here write, for example, a description or whatever. Something like that. Maybe it's too long, <laughs> of course, but um, I just want to prove that you can write whatever you want there. So, okay, we have the header of the state machine and we have the possible states. So now we should pick the start state. So of course it will start in none. When I create a record, the invoice is still in, in an unknown status. So, okay, let's change this to unknown. That's a good example. So um, now let's see. From here, where can I go? So which are the possible next states of the invoice? It can be draft or sent. So let's add the transitions. So draft will be zero. 
and send will be one okay so let's save this and let's make the state machine active and save this and let's create an invoice to see how it's working so far new invoice the original status or state is none and from here I can move to draft or send so far so good let's pick one just to see what happened draft okay after this this is the last state in North flow so after that you don't see the change state action anymore so let's fix that okay so let's create the next state so from draft from draft where can it go it can be sent or void so let's create the transition send will be zero and void will be one and let's save here okay so let's save and close close here and let's create a new invoice so the original state is known let's move it to draft and now see the the change state action is still visible from here i can move to send or void so void and that's the last state so the action disappears so let's close this and let's go to the invoice flow again so from send where can it go from send it can be our first option will be paid then our second option will be overdue this will be one then it can be void this will be two and it can be also a write-off this will be three so uh, here we have two with the same okay so paid is zero overdue is one void should be two and okay let's create a new invoice so we start with none let's move to draft from draft i can uh, either make it void or send so let's send and from send we have paid overdue void and write off so let's pay it and sometimes if you're in the last part of the flow you maybe want to save and close um, the records i mean the detail view so let's fix that so from send here we have four different um, transitions so we want to save and close if it's paid if it's void or if it's write off but when it's over do we want to leave it open so let's check this so we start with none let's move it to draft then send so if i pick uh, paid void or draft or write off the window should close so let's check that let's pay this see now it we went back to the list view so let's check the other uh, possible flow so draft send and overdo in overdo should leave it open see now it's open and i can continue working with the record so let's save this and let's go back and do one more modification so what I want to do is to expand the actions in the detail view 
in this case we will see a set of uh, simple actions in the middle of the screen in the detail view so let's come back here and let's create a new invoice so now we have two possibilities we can either change the status or the state with the change action or in the actions in the detail view so let's make this draft then send and here I have all the other possible options so this will be a write-off okay so right now we are dynamically creating the flows for the change of a status or state so we can even do more with that we can actually add some validations to it so for example uh, the first status is unknown and from here it can jump to draft or send so to be a draft um, or to be sent the um, uh, the amount should be greater than zero so let's go to those states draft so in here we will have validation so the target uh, object criteria should be that the amount should be greater than zero and I will copy this and I will take it to send and I will paste this here and let's save and close and go to the invoice again let's create a new invoice and let's move it to draft see it cannot it cannot change a status or a state because the object um, the amount is not greater than zero the same goes to send so if I put one I should be able to move the status to draft perfect so in here um, I can send it or make it void so I will add new um, criteria here so I can only make it void if it's less than a hundred dollars if it's greater than that um, well it can be void in any case right I guess so there's a different validation let's go to the state machine flow and let's see let's make that it can only be a write-off if well here I have the condition if the amount let's make it backwards is uh, less than two hundred dollars so save and close and save and close here so let's create a new invoice so let's do it with 100 we can send and here we can make it write off right because it's less than than 200 so let's make this a write off and let's try again let's create a new invoice this will be 300 let's send it and now this I will not be able to make a write-off because it's greater than 200 so write-off see it's not possible so the state machine module can help you not only with uh, the possible transitions or flows for each status of the object but you can also validate that the object is in in a state a possible state to be able to move to that um, to, to be able to make a transition in general so that is almost everything that we have for the state machine but we will create a second video for this and we will use the same example and in that example we will check the conditional appearance uh, that can be done also while you do the transition and we will be checking what we can do with the change action change state action in code so that's everything for this video see you guys on the next video